Okay, so I'm starving and I don't feel like waiting a really long time to go get a burger and then bring it to another place to get another burger. So we stopped at Whole Foods and we picked up some sushi. I got myself a little spring roll type thing and Roberto got like a fake ahi tuna with tomatoes and an avocado roll and uh, we're gonna eat them on our way. How does that taste? It's actually really good. Really? Yeah. Can I have a bite? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. Yo! That's good. It tastes really fishy for a tomato. Good job, Whole Foods. Hey guys, it's Vegan Bodega Cat, AKA Rebecca. No, the reverse. The AKA is the Vegan Bodega Cat. Anyway, if you may or may not have heard, Impossible Burger came out with a second version. So they had their first version, which blew up the world by storm, uh, but just recently they have leaked their second version. Some restaurants carry it, some don't, and I was curious what differences are there between the first Impossible Burger and the second. Later on in the video, I'm gonna try to find the ingredients for both and compare them, but for right now, I found one restaurant that still carries the first Impossible Burger and one that carries the second one, and we're gonna do a little taste test comparison. The first restaurant we're going to is Quantum Leap. They still carry the first Impossible Burger as of uploading this video, However, they are transitioning to the second Impossible Burger sometime next month, as the owner tells me. The second restaurant we're going to is Bear Burger. They have fully switched over to the second Impossible Burger as of maybe last week. So the plan is, we're going to go to Quantum Leap, get us a plain burger to make the playing field as level as possible, then make our way over to Bear Burger, get a plain burger there, and then pit them against each other. So, let's go. We have our burger from Quantum Leap, the first impossible burger. We ate the fries in there because nobody likes soggy condensed fries, you know, that have been sitting in their own steam for a little bit. So we got those out of the way and we are on our way to Bear Burger to get the second version uh, and this we pit them against each other. Okay, so here we are at Bear Burger. We walked over, it wasn't too bad. Thank God it's not cold today. And we're gonna get our impossible burger number two. It was kind of cold outside at this point, so I wanted to do my up-close examination of the burgers indoors. I really wanted to see if there was a color slash texture difference between the two burgers, or the difference is really just in flavor. Right off the bat, the first Impossible Burger looked a little more sad, but I think that was partially because the bun got a bit soggy in transport. Side by side, Impossible Burger number two has a little bit more of a char on it, but even with that, you can tell that the first burger is a little bit more green and the second one is a little more brown. When I really examined the first burger up close, I noticed a super, super stringy texture that the Impossible Burger has been known for. The second version of the Impossible Burger, however, came apart a little more chunky, and you can tell that it's a little more juicy as well. Texturally, I would say the second Impossible Burger is closer to the real deal. All right, as you can see, I nibbled on the burgers a little bit, but I'm not gonna give you my complete assessment until I take a solid bite. What I'm going to do is take a bite of the burger slash bun alone, and then I'm gonna dress each one the way the restaurant wanted it dressed, and take a bite then. This way you can get a you know cleaner opinion, and an opinion with all of the 
fixings. Yeah? Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with the first Impossible Burger. I've had the first Impossible Burger before at White Castle. I don't think I've had it otherwise. I had it in a dumpling the other day, but not in burger form. So. Let's do this. So here's the first Impossible Burger. It has a slight greenish hint to it, but the texture is very meaty, a little bit stringier than like actual meat perhaps. But as you can see, there's like a slight pinkness in the middle. And I mean, it's pretty convincing for a vegan burger. All right, so let's take a dry bite of this thing. Pretty meaty. Pretty dry. Like a dry edge of a burger that's half stuck to the grill. You know that crispy, crusty edge? That's what it tastes like. But for a vegan burger, really well done. I think they did a really good job with the Impossible Burger in general. I would give it a solid eight out of 10. Dry, yeah. So now let's go on to the Impossible Burger number two. Now, they accidentally put vegan cheese on this one, so I will be taking the bite without the cheese, just to make it fair. As you can see, the texture is a lot more solid, a little more similar to the um, Beyond Meat burger than the Impossible burger. It holds together a lot well, and it doesn't have that Impossible burger stringy texture to it, which is super interesting. So let's take a bite. Yo. It's juicy. It doesn't taste overdone. It tastes slightly like bacon. That is really good. I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. This might fool a non-vegan, actually. This might fool a non-vegan to thinking it was real meat. All right, so now let's try them with the toppings that they came with. So the toppings that Quantum Leap gave us for their burger was a little bit of this shredded cheese. I'm not quite sure which brand they use. Some lettuce, tomato, avocado, and a little bit of like diced onion. This is definitely gonna be a much more difficult bite. It's gonna be messy. The avocado makes it less dry, but you still taste that overdone-ness. I would say the toppings don't improve the flavor on this one. It tastes the same. As you saw earlier, the Impossible Burger from Bear Burger already had vegan cheese on it. It also has lettuce, some sort of maybe Thousand Island sauce, and they gave me some pickles as well. I already know this is probably gonna be really good. Mmm. Mmm. This is so good. This is so good. I would still rate it the same. Like, what did I give it a nine and a half out of 10? Or nine out of 10? It still is that good. I don't wanna go out and give it a 10 out of 10 just because I know that vegan meat can get there, it can get to that 100% and it's not there yet. But I would definitely eat, enjoy this, and recommend it to non-vegans. Mm. I know I didn't look like I was cold out there, but I was pretty freezing. So we ran back inside for Roberto to try the burgers. We had the same opinion. The first Impossible Burger is definitely good. However, the second version of the Impossible Burger really blows it out of the water. I think he also gave it a 9.5 out of 10. All right, so I looked up the ingredient differences for you guys, and I'll put the ingredient changes on the next little clip just so you can pause it and read it for yourself. However, the main difference between the Impossible Burger number one and two is that in the second version, they removed the wheat protein and replaced it with a higher amount of soy protein, which, if I'm not mistaken, makes it completely gluten-free. I'll definitely double check and fix that if I'm wrong, um, and gives it a higher soy content. I am not anti-soy, so I'm fully down with that, but but in the next little screen, I'll have the ingredients up. Well then, all right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, both Roberto and I definitely preferred the second Impossible Burger. We are really excited to see it rolling out in new restaurants, and we think they made the right decision with the formula change. So, like if you like, subscribe if you wanna subscribe. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, where I post almost every single day, then I will put it right here. No, right here. And let me know if you've tried the Impossible Burger, if you've tried the first one, if you tried the second one, what do you think of the differences? And 
if you have it available near you in your city because I don't think it's available everywhere yet. Um, yeah, that's all I have for today. I will talk to you next time. Goodbye!